the FPV Invective. Uh, it's got a little different screw uh, pattern for securing it. it got one on each side there, which is kind of different. And then two little ones here, one uh, right there, one up here that are small. The back screen has another two screws that are very small. And then there's just one remaining on the bottom. So a little different than you see, but uh, still not bad. Just a few pieces of hardware to get this out. Lots going on on the back panel. Uh, we'll get it out and take a look. Great, let's take a look. We've got uh, input transformers here. There's a rectifier uh, array of diodes right down in there. Um, got most of the filtration and rectification uh, over here where these big filter caps are. And there's another uh, rectifier right down in there under my thumb there's four diodes making up our rectifier bridge there's three uh, fast acting fuses in here too there's one right down here half amp sits right there so that's on the board there's a one amp that sits right in here under these uh, these are actually output transformer connections, but there's a uh, one amp fuse down there. And then there's another uh, fast acting fuse right here. So those are all you know, possible locations of a blown fuse if, you, uh, if your unit doesn't power up. Transformers look good. They're wrapped with copper shielding. Uh, it's also wired up for uh, overseas 220 or 110, which is nice. Some uh, amps don't have that feature. Uh, that's really labeled nicely. The bundling isn't as neat and tidy as uh, the igniter stuff, but it's bundled together. And you do have a lot of extra wire, which is sometimes nice if you want to get a board out. You clip these zip ties, and the wires are long enough that you can actually get the board away from the the uh, amp and work on it. Uh, we've got a bias adjustment pot right here. It's also accessible from the top, which is kind of nice. I don't necessarily see a test point, but I'm sure it's available. You could probably find out where it is. This is interesting. This is a pretty high watt resistor that's in some posts that's just inserted into these posts which means it's uh it's done it's like that so that you can remove it and put a different value in perhaps but it's not soldered into these friction fit posts it's just sitting there so that's interesting kind of worth thinking about checking out again later um, lots going on in here send and return cable usb cable and again everything is really nicely labeled um, the pots on the front are such that you're not going to be able to wash them out real good. They're plastic, um, so hopefully they don't get noisy too soon. I don't see a real easy way to wash those out. Our tube layout is the uh, first 12AX7 is here. And we got 12AX7, 12AX7 there as well. And this is the EL84 and another EL84 right there. The, uh, this transformer over here, these wires come from the output transformer, which is under there. That's the one that changes our values for the speaker. It's the output transformer, and all those wires come up and tie into this board right here. This is our effects loop, foot switch, um, jacks right here. These huge power resistors are for the attenuation, which is nice to see. So it's a, an actual power soak type attenuator. We've got the output transformer wires come into the board here. Your speaker out jacks are here, and the attenuation is there as well. 
ohmage selection is here, um, and the speaker defeat is here, as well as the 1 watt, 5 watt, or 20 watt. So your attenuation is between the output of the, the amp and the speaker, which means it's not just an effects loop volume control. It means you're getting most of your tone is being um, kept um, instead of just changing the effect, uh, volume in the effects loop, which can rob you of quite a bit of tone. So this is actual a power, resistor, power resistor array between the speaker out, output jack, and the uh, outputs from the output transformer. So it's just like having the Bugera power soak or some other type of attenuator between your amp and your speaker. So it is legit, which is kind of nice. Um, USB is back here. Uh, that's a CMOS transistor of some sort. Complementary metal oxide semiconductor, probably a CMOS type deal. Ooh. Crystal. As a crystal, I think probably oscillating crystal. Um, pretty busy board. Lots of surface mount stuff in here that you'd be hard pressed to fix. I mean, there's another little transistor probably right there. Three legs. Um, some sort of brain thing. Brain thing. Caps. Diodes. The D's are diodes. Pretty high power diode, very low power diode right there. I mean, good night trying to figure out what's going on there. Relays, probably. Anyway, um, it's nicely labeled, which is nice, you know. There's your USB stuff, send and return plugs. Solder joints all look really good. There's ample amount of solder and they're shiny. Uh, I would like to see a test point for that. I don't have any need or desire to change the bias. I'm pretty happy. I'm very happy with the tone. This has a tone that will cut through the mix very nicely. Um, more so probably than the um, Fireball that I have. The Fireball is great, but it could be better if it was matched with a speaker, a mid, more mid-range speaker like a Swamp Thing or an Eminence D77 McThompson oh, speaker, which I just happen to have right here. Um, pretty excited about putting that in an angle 1x12 Pro Cab, but it's going to take me a few months to raise the, to keep the money, save the money for that. I'm going to have to do a lot of chimneys and gutter cleaning before I can afford that. But I do want one, and I'm going to put that D77 in it. It's going to be massive. All right, so that's that. Let me take you around the top. Uh, this is also labeled up kind of nice. There's the top. Power tubes, EL84. There's the bias adjust right there. But there's no test point up here. So you might do it by ear, which a lot of techs will tell you. Just... You know, lower it, raise it, until it sounds good to you. That's about it. Pretty straightforward. L oh, just spelled my drink, but not too much. LEDs that light up and give it that blue look inside. It's a nice amp, but it sounds really, really good. It's got a tone that cuts through for sure. All right, this was uh, that one last screw I took out was this long. It goes all the way from the bottom, all the way up from the bottom of the chassis into this floating mat right here. So this sucker's long. All right.